let's get started. So thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And yes, I'm back live for a Ask Genome HQ segment. So let's flip around. Oh, and Anne Hine is here. Lovely from Genome America. Hello, hello. So yes, for Ask Genome HQ. Again, we get so many questions on our various social media, uh, Genome Life blog, and our Genome HQ YouTube channel, especially. We got so many questions from there. So I thought, ooh, we'll go here to Genome HQ YouTube. Oh, let's see. Oh, can I zoom in? Yay. Okay. So then again, on our Genome HQ YouTube. So on our Genome Canada social media, Genome HQ social media, Genome Life blog, and our Genome HQ YouTube channel. Here it is. So if you type in your browser, you know, Genome HQ. Oh, Genome, uh, Grandma Cross here. Perfect. So type in your browser, again, Genome HQ uh, on YouTube, and then again in my notifications here, I always receive lots of questions. So as I scroll through, uh, Charlene, for example, is asking, may I ask, if you wanted to set up your machine to do a scant quarter of an inch, I said in the 9450 video that I did uh, that I changed the settings from the default of 8.3 to 9.0. And she's asking, wouldn't you just want to move uh, to, say, an 8.4 or 8.5? You know, th and then she goes on to say that seems like, you know, a big jump. So when we're going to do oh let me switch on my fabulous cm17 here and this would apply to pretty much any of our machines uh but specifically the in this case these nine millimeter machines mm -hmm. oh, there we go uh that have the default uh quilt settings for your piecing then you could make these adjustments again when we always talk about you know that scant quarter of an inch as we're doing our piecing and again uh, we want to get that perfect quarter of an inch or again slightly smaller quarter of an inch because as we're doing our piecing and in this case here i have these three pieces sewn together as we're doing our piecing there's a little bit and here's our seam line here there's a little bit of fabric you know taken up in that fold every time we do a seam and we fold our fabric back out to the right side we lose a little bit in this fold so when we're doing all of our blocks you know by measuring but then when we actually do it three dimensionally here again we can sometimes lose a little in that fold so your seaming and then also your uh, pressing techniques can make a big difference too in the accuracy of your piecing so traditionally, again, when we're doing most quilt piecing is at a quarter of an inch. And on many of our machines, oh, like the 15,000 and Skyline S9 and Memorycraft, um, oh, 9450 and, uh, oh, I think even 9850 has the quilting category. So right now I'm in utilities stitches, but then I go here to the little curly Q is decorative stitches and quilting. And then if I go into our quilting category here, we have this quarter of an inch piecing stitch, boom, and it automatically moves our needle over to the right. It's suggesting we use the O foot, the quarter of an inch seam foot. And Janome actually has for the nine millimeter machines, we have uh, two options, one with the guide as pictured here and one without the guide. So you can use which either quarter of an inch foot you would like. And again, this default stitch automatically moves the needle to the right. Now you'll see here the default is at 8.3 uh, width needle position. You know, we've got nine millimeter wide here on the CM17, and then the needle is over at 8.3 for our quarter of an inch. Uh, the stitch length is at uh, 1.8, which I love using as a nice tighter stitch, then we don't have to worry about back stitching. And whenever 
we're doing these samples, again, I always suggest, you know, cut up your stash, cut up your scraps. And this is when you're doing some experimenting, right? What stitch you're using. In this case, I'm quilting category, stitch number two. And then again, the default is 8.3. And then the length is 1.8. So when I sew my three pieces together, then then this is how we can also determine uh, if the seam allowance is correct or not, if it's accurate or not. Uh, the way I learned years ago, my heroine, Eleanor Burns from Quilt in a Day, uh, I owe my entire quilting career to her. <laughs> uh, she, and when I first started uh, quilting 31 years ago now, suggested take your three... Uh, these are six inch, uh, two and a half inch wide strips. It doesn't really matter how long they are, but they recommend six inch strips, two and a half inch wide, uh, three strips, and then you're going to seam these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So if we have, and again, it's very easy to determine. So we have three pieces here, each or two and a half inches. So if we take two and a half inch plus two and a half inch, plus two and a half inch equals seven and a half inches. But when we seam these together here, we're going to have a seam allowance here and a seam allowance here. There's a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. So collectively, that's half of an inch. And then we're going to have a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. Again, that's another half an inch. So from this seven and a half, we need to minus one inch collectively for our seam allowances that are going to disappear here. So then 6.5 is what our three strips, when sewn together with a quarter of an inch, they should end up being 6.5 inches. So now sometimes to determine the correct stitch width, and uh, many machines, again, we can adjust the needle position, uh, that we would take like a, a ruled uh, guide, a little seam guide, or in this case, I love using these, um, these are quilt in a day rulers, but uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. But again, it's got a quarter of an inch guide on it. So there's a, this dash quarter of an inch line. So I'm going to line up my ruler with the edge of this foot here, and then I'm going to slowly turn my balance wheel so my needle drops down or on the cm17 have you seen this <gasps> look at this handy feature this fabulous new thumb wheel so this we can rotate the needle down again i've got my ruler lined up with my guide here and then i uh, slowly rotate my needle down and is it going to hit that quarter of an inch line and in this case oh yes I look like I even have to stand up to make sure I'm doing that. So can I, you know, rotate that very thing? Yes, that looks very good. So, okay, this is a good place to start. Now, we also, on many of our Janome machines, we have these fabulous quarter of an inch ruled uh, markings on our uh, patented needle plate. So we could also use the markings on our needle plate to determine that quarter of an inch. So when we're sewing along... Again, we've got this default uh, 8.3 length, or 8.3 width, <laughs> and now, again, it's always hard to sew when you have a camera in front of you, so I'll just place you all off to the side here. So I'm just going to take my strips, and I'm going to sew... There, I've got my fabric lined up against that guide. Now, again, you choose whatever foot is good for you. I like having the little guide here on the side. Uh, so then as I'm stitching that along, there we go, beautiful. So then that's at our 8.3. And again, we could take our uh, measurement here, our ruler and line up and I can see, okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty accurate. But then again, when we fold this over, and take it to the pressing surface, or sometimes uh, we can just, you know, score it here with our finger or like get a, a wooden uh, pressing tool or something to score it there. Sometimes, again, with this fold, we lose a little bit of that measurement. 
So uh, that can be determined by the thickness of our fabric as well, the thickness of our thread. So most of the time we're uh, doing our piecing with like maybe a 50 weight, 40 weight or 50 weight thread. Uh, this is the fabulous, uh, fabulous uh, iris uh, polyester quilting thread. And again, it comes in uh, the uh, spools here or the mini king cones I use all the time. Uh, this is the cotton uh, quilting thread. This is the uh, polyester kind of regular sewing thread, but I like using this uh, cotton quilting thread a lot too. Again, both are 50 weight. So it's a little bit, you know, thicker. It's kind of, you know, average. But when I compare it to the, oh, this is a hundred weight thread. Ooh, it's quite a bit finer. Now, sometimes people... Oh, Shane is here. Hello, hello. Uh, sometimes instead of the usual kind of 50 weight thread, uh, I know many quilters who like piecing with a 60 weight thread or even an 80 weight thread. Uh, this one here is 100, so it's quite fine. Uh, thread is very weird in that the higher the number, the finer the thread, the lower the number, the thicker the thread. So a 12 weight thread, for example, is a very thick thread, whereas this 100 weight thread is very thin. So another thing that can uh, determine your stitch uh, width here, your seam allowance, is Again, the thickness of your fabric, this is just regular cotton quilting fabric, but again, your thread can really make a big difference too, because that 50 weight thread is going to take up a little bit more room in that seam allowance than this 100 weight, for example. So uh, I found out when I did my default 8.3 quarter of an inch stitch, again, most of the time that's no problem at all, but when I measured, in this case, my three strips that again, we determined they should be six and a half inches wide. Now your pressing technique, again, will also determine this accuracy. Uh, you want to make sure you press it out really flat, uh, no puckers or anything. Uh, when I put my ruler on here, I'm just a little shy. I'm about like an eighth of an inch shy. And when I see here on my ruler, why I love these rulers is that uh, this is my two inch line here. And then there's a little tick mark for the uh, two and the one sixteenth. And then this would be, or one eighth, two and one eighth. And this would be two and two eighths, or that would be two and a quarter. Uh, my seam line here isn't quite on that two and a quarter quarter inch line. So I know my seam is just a little bigger than I would prefer it to be. Now, again, it's not significantly off, but if we had a big quilt with multiple, multiple pieces, again, our, our overall measurement could end up, uh, you know, shrinking quite uh, drastically if we uh, take that little eighth of an inch difference times multiple blocks. So... Many times quilters instead want to use, again, we could use a finer thread and that would more than likely be totally fine. But if we didn't have the finer thread that, oh, this is where, again, we want that scant quarter of an inch. So we need to move our needle position to the right. Now, if you can't move your needle position to the right, you can move your fabric to the left. <laughs> so you could do one or the other. So then uh, here I can move my needle to the right. So instead of just, uh, if I did 8.4 as uh, Charlene was asking, like that is just such a tiny little fraction. It's not even a full needle position. I'm going to adjust my needle and I don't know if you'll be able to uh, see it. Because it's so fine. I, again, we have 91 needle positions here in the 9 millimeter machines. Like, can you see tiny, tiny, ooh, let's do tiny, tiny. Like, ooh, so little. So ultimately, I'm going to go over to 9.0. Now, this is where you need to experiment as well. Because maybe you're doing your piecing and, oh, you're... Um, 8.4 would work fine, or 8.5 would work fine, 8.6 would work fine. Again, you do your experimenting and find out. I like going over to 9.0 to move it all the way over. So then, again, when we're doing our piecing, and I take that same piece, then you'll see... 
whoops, make sure I'm over. It's hard when I'm sewing up the side, but I really want to make this accurate. So there we go. So when I'm stitching using that 9.0 seam allowance, can you see, don't look up there, I was way off. <laughs> uh, but there, can you see, you, I've got two distinct lines of thread. This one is at 8 point, the one on the left is at 8.3, but then the one here on the right is 9.0. So it's a little closer. So my seam allowance is like dead on quarter of an inch or again, slightly scant. So when I used that 9.0 seam allowance and then did my three pieces here, and then I take my measurement there, my ruled, ooh, ruled measurement there, like then it ended up so perfectly. It's like bang on 6.5. It's exactly what I want. So Again, we could use a finer thread would help. And again, your pressing technique, you want to make sure these seams are nice and flat. Uh, there's no uh, puckering in here or anything. Uh, but again, moving your needle over if you need to. Sometimes you don't need to at all. It really depends on the project. And it really depends what your finished block is supposed to be. So this, uh, you know, if, if you're piecing a block, <laughs> for example, it really depends on what your piece is. I don't always need to move that needle position. If I'm just sewing on a sashing, for example, that 8.3 is perfectly fine. But if it really, you know, this block needs to be six and a half inches I really like it to be as accurate as possible so that's why moving that needle position over and how much you move it over again really depends on what that finish measurement is and again whether or not uh, what thread you use if you use a thinner thread uh, what kind of fabric all of that there's so many variables but that why again you do your little experimentation and write your little samples here this is quilt stitch number two again and now this is 9.0 same stitch length at 1.8 length and then this again sample worked out perfectly to six and a half inches so that is how you can determine which uh length or which width that you need specifically so i thought that was a great question to ask uh charlene and again that was in the uh Janome hq youtube channel so another couple of things very quickly is, oh, uh, we had a question about price. Uh, when I did a video on the Continental M17 here, uh, what is the price? Well, again, when you go to our, if you are in Canada, in your browser here, you type up Genomi Canada, for example, or in the US, then you type genomi.com. If you're in Australia, you know, you type for Genomi Australia. So wherever, whatever country you're in, it's make sure that you go to the Genomi website that's applicable because the prices are all going to be different. So here in Canada, again, when we want to find out a price of the CM17 or any Genomi machine for that matter, we can go on to genomi.ca and then under the products category we can scroll down and then it says machines and we can view all machines that way if we want to find out uh, some accessories we can go to the accessories tab or we also have a search box up here ooh, up here at the top so then i can just quickly type in cm17 and then enter and then here, CM17, boom, there we go. And then we can see the suggested retail price. Manufacturer's retail price is on the website. Uh, but then again, always double check with your Genomi dealer as well, because they have their own individual sales and promotions. And, and you know, so always double check with them. But again, you can find the prices, the manufacturer's suggested prices of Genomi machines on your respective Genomi websites in this case. Uh, genomi.ca so that is there and then uh ed was saying about when i did a video on the uh hd 3000 black edition heavy duty uh black edition machine what is the width capacity so the width uh could be two things i'm not exactly sure by width specifically so here again genomi.ca we can type in that little search box oh the hd 3000 in this case the width now typically when we're asking about what is the width of the sewing machine we're talking about the needle plate width 
So it would be, you know, here, what's that width? So we can scroll down whatever machine. Uh, again, we can scroll down. It'll tell us some key features, uh, the accessories that are included with the machine. We've got a drop down menu of look at all those optional accessories that are ooh, available. So we can see all that. And then we can even do model comparisons between other machines. We can, oops, enter them all in there. But if we scroll down here, oh, here, maximum stitch width. It is 6.5 millimeters. So that's the, the width of that needle plate. Now, if we are talking about the width here, like the bed of the machine, uh, I have one of these in my classrooms. I don't have them here in my palatial estate in Collingwood. Uh, but I believe from memory, the width of the bed of the HD 3000 is about six and three quarters. So on average, six and a half, six and three quarters in general is the bed of the sewing machine. And again, a 6.5 uh, width of your stitch uh, needle plate. So that is good there. So again, you can find all that information out on genomi.ca. Uh, and then also, oh, there was a question about... Uh, to uh, where to find, ooh, where to find the elastic, uh, oh yes, where can I purchase an elastic inserted foot for my Janome, uh 2000D air thread serger? That's from Monica. So again, if we go uh, type in our browser, so again, I'm looking at the notifications here in the uh, Janome HQ website. But if we go to genome.ca, and then again, we'll get back to that products tab. And then again, accessories. Whenever we're looking for an accessories, we can view all accessories and then we can click on our Genomi Accessory Guide, which is right here, Bilingual Genomi Accessories Guide. Or again, we've got a little search box here. So if I type in elastic, Oh, then here's an elastic gathering attachment for the serger. Click on it. There is the parts number for it. And this is the machines it's compatible with. For example, with the air thread serger there, this elastic gathering attachment. Uh, where can we find it? Well, again, we can go to genomi.ca and we can go up to where to buy up at the top, where to buy. And that is a list of our Janome dealers. So again, where can we buy the machines and the accessories, any of the presser feet and anything, even in Canada, where can we buy that Helos Iris cotton quilting thread, for example? Well, we can go to our Janome dealers, uh, again, on the where to buy tab on our genome.ca site, and we can find the dealer in our area. We can type the postal code and find the dealers in our area and contact them and say, hey, can you order this for me? Chances are they've got the item in their store, but if not, they can always order it for you. So that is an easy way to find uh, answers to your questions there. But again, it's always wonderful to see all of that feedback. I love reading all the questions on our various social media about all of our fabulous Janome products and any way to share the Janome love. And there we go. So hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. It's wonderful to see you all, and I will see you all uh, next week for another, ooh, it should be Magical Machine Mystery Tour, and oh, what will the machine be? Oh, I'm not sure. It's a mystery. So make sure that you tune in. So thank you, everyone, for joining me. Oh, and as a heads up, even though, again, technically I'm off this week, uh, but I've still been responding to email. You know how it is. <laughs> uh, tomorrow I am doing a live with... Liz Johnson from Sew for Home on the Genomi Canada Facebook page at 3 p.m. It's our usual segment every third Thursday of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I do a live on the Genomi Canada Facebook page with Liz Johnson, our friend from Sew for Home. So we've got some sneak peeks and some special little goodies to share with you. So again, that's live tomorrow, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern on Genomi Canada's Facebook page. So I hope to see you there and I hope to see you here next week for a Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a fabulous this day. Bye. <laughs>